he, I mean, when he was in his 90s, close to when he passed, he had, as many do, difficulty remembering things, but he could tell you every person's name on those undefeated teams in the mid-20s that he played on at Gainesville High. He loved Gainesville High School. It was everything to him. Graduated from Gainesville High. I played basketball and tennis at Gainesville High, and it didn't even touch what my grandfather did, and <clears throat> just made me so proud. Just uh, such a deep pride that Trey and I have for what he accomplished, and just the man that he was, because you're right, I, I did look up to him and uh, worked with him at Paris Dunlap Hardware. Uh, every day we went to lunch and he would tell me these stories about athletics or life or how he started the business. And I, to this day, I still think that we benefit from those. This is my, my picture of when I was little. And you can see I just hung on every word that he said. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty self-made. I think his real foundation was here in Gainesville in this community and um, coming up through high school and I agree with you he was very very much a team oriented person and that carried over even when he went to the University of Georgia and played quarterback um, he loves to talk about that 1929 team that he was a part of that upset mighty Yale when they dedicated Sanford Stadium and he would talk about the I remember he was telling me about the train ride they took to go play NYU, which was another big football powerhouse back way back then, and that was quite something for a small kid from Gainesville, Georgia, to get on a train and go to New York and play football. And um, you know, the funny thing was he weighed 125 pounds in full <laughs> uniform, which is just amazing when you think about they it. They called him the flea. Yeah. Because he was so little. But he was fast, so it was the flea. Well, I, it comes to mind, you know, back before, this is kind of a common saying now, but you doing the right thing even when someone, you know, no one's looking. And I can remember, you know, one little thing. He was involved in, of all things, the, the Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And when he would be ready for a, a new car, was going to purchase a new car, he always donated his old car to the Girl Scouts. We've been always batted around the 16 letter man and known that and knew what a phenomenal athlete he was but I've, I you know until you framed it that way that in all of Gainesville you know I think it just hadn't resonated um, so that's you know makes me very proud he'd lean over to me and he'd say you know if coach Dooley was smart right here he'd fake a handoff up the middle and do a toss sweep and Dang, if that isn't what would happen. Every time he'd come in from work at night, he'd throw his change into a big uh, jar. Mm -hmm. And right before Christmas, he would bring, Trey and I would go over and we'd dump it in the floor and he'd say, okay, now y'all count it, roll it. We'd had, that was back before you could throw it in the Publix bin. Roll it and we were to use it. But it had to be divided evenly. Evenly. <laughs> But we would use no it to, to buy each other's Christmas present. And, you know, it just, it taught us, A, the value of money, which as children was just so valuable, and also giving. And well, we're, we're obviously incredibly proud of him and what he did, and we're very, we're, we're very humbled by it at the same time. I mean, he, he was a great athlete, but, and he, he just lived and breathed athletics football primarily but baseball and basketball too you know and he was a state champion for many many years held the state record for i think the 220 hurdles maybe but um but we're, we're very very honored and humbled by this